Hello guys and welcome to a new video where I will show you how I developed my game for a game jam. The game jam I made it for is called Wobby Jam 2 and it was hosted by Jonas Tyroller. Go check out his channel, he's got a bunch of cool stuff in there. Anyways, uh, let's begin. The theme was Intentional Bugs. This is a very cool theme as you can implement many things into your game and call them an intentional bug. Before going to the jam, I really knew I wanted to make a game with a beaver as the main character, so the first thing I did was to model the main character. As I was modeling it, I started coming up with a few ideas, and by the time I was somewhat happy with the model, I had settled on this idea for the game. A first person game where you are swimming in a lake surrounded by a forest. One side of the lake is set on fire and the other is completely fine. Your job is to build bridges to help animals cross to the not so dangerous side. So I created a new project and jumped right into coding or movement in 3D space. I chose to go with a rigid body controller that does not use gravity. I also imported a water shader I had made a while back into my project and this is what our game looks like at this stage. When you are underwater, you should be able to see less, so I added an image that covers the whole screen and set its color to a light blue with low opacity. You know, I love level design, so I created a little terrain for our game. Next, I imported our beaver and gave him a ragdoll-like physics to its bones to simulate swimming. Let's hit play and check it out now. I also changed the camera to a third person instead. It looks way better, I think. When you collide with terrain, you lose all your momentum. This is very important as I am making the controls intentionally buggy and really hard, so having a way to completely stop is a must. A few moments later. I made a slider that acts as kind of a fuel for how long you can fly above water and imported this Pepe Hands model I had laying around in my computer for a while because, um, why not, right? The beaver looked like he was just floating above water, so I went back to modeling and gave him some wings. In Unity, I made a shader using Shadercraft to hide the wings whenever we are swimming and then show them if we are flying. At this stage, I was quite happy how the game was looking, so I created a very simple main menu that contains a slider to change the audio volume and a bottom to start the game and also a panel that shows you the key bindings uh, on this day i completely got rid of the whole idea of building bridges and instead i decided to make a reverse tower defense instead of building towers to stop waves of enemies or animals in this case you have to help them get through the level and so I imported a white rabbit asset I found online and created a spawning manager that controls the rabbit's destinations. I don't like the fact that there is only one path. Usually tower defenses have two or three different paths to increase their difficulty. So I did some more level design. Let's check out how it's looking now. So many rabbits everywhere. Now we need to create something to block rabbits from continuing forward and so we use a tree trunk as a path blocker. Basically whenever you fly onto it, the object gets removed from the game. Problem was that rabbits were not stopping so I went into a rabbit script and made them do a raycast forward to check if there is a trunk in front of them and voila! I'm going to duplicate these three blockers and give them a dissolve shader for the sake of good visuals because, you know, when they disappear instantly, it just doesn't look that good. This is what their level looks like now. You can see them rabbits getting stuck here. Let's uh, fly into it so that they can pass. Of 
cool, it's all working quite nicely. Now we need to kill these rabbits when they are stuck for a while, so I'm going to create a piranha, 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 excuse me, in Blender and import it into Unity. These piranhas will be patrolling different areas of the map, and whenever they come within a radius of a rabbit, there will be a chance for them to go hunt the rabbit down. Please don't laugh at my model, I made it like in 10 minutes. A few moments later. Okay, so I just finished calling these piranhas patrol mode. There will be four of them. Their patrol patterns are this. So if a rabbit were to survive the first piranha and then take the mid path, they will reach the end safely. Now, since I intentionally made the controls hard and buggy, I am going to create an ability that fixes your rotation and give it a particle effect. Next, we need to create a minimap using Unity's render texture and a camera placed high up in the sky. We need to display a defeat text, so we made a window that shows you your score and gives you an option to return to the main menu. I wanted to give the player a second chance on saving a rabbit, so I created an image on GIMP of a rabbit with wings and a halo. Then, back in Unity, I use a particle system that will use this texture. The code for the dead rabbit was pretty simple. Whenever you collide with it, it will give you points and destroy itself. Today, I'm quite tired of working on this, so I'm going to take it easy and do some last touches to the main menu and other things. I also want to come up with a cinematic intro for the game, then finish it up by creating the logo for the itch.io page and publish the game. That is it for this video guys, I hope you all enjoyed it, you can play this game in your browser, there will be a link to it in the description down below. Thanks for watching and have a good one, bye bye.